Welcome to Dorset. Today we're at Corfe Castle and we're working the light. Corfe Castle, it has to be one of Dorset's most iconic locations. In fact, probably one of the country's most iconic locations. There's going to be few photographers out there who haven't seen Corfe Castle rising through the mist. It's just an epic shot, but it's become a bit cliche. Let's face it, everybody's got it. It's one of those ones that we all chase, we all love it, and with good reason. It is a beautiful shot, and I'm still guilty of chasing it myself. I've shot it God knows how many times, but I just love it. It's a really, really good shot, so there's nothing wrong with that. But today, we're gonna to try something a little bit different. Everyone tends to shoot it with mist, and that's the go-to shot. But today, we've got some nice dappled light coming out, and I really like to shoot it when we've got those conditions as well. The main key to this shot is patience. You've just gotta wait it out. The light will work its way across. Sometimes it will hit the castle, sometimes it won't. It's well worth it. Once you do get it, you're gonna uh, nail a really, really good shot, and it'll be something a bit more original. Most people aren't gonna shoot these conditions with it, so it's worth looking at. Ideally, you want somewhere that's got some good rolling hillside, because once you're high up and you can see over the contours of the land, the light becomes much more visible. If you're on flat ground, it's just never quite the same. Sure, there's patches there, but it doesn't reveal quite the same amount. So with a good bit of rolling hillside, like we've got with the castle, just in the background here, you just see we've got a little bit of light working away uh, across the flank just up here. That's what we're waiting for. Essentially, once that light moves all the way across to the castle and illuminates that, we're going to get a very dark, shadowy background due to the, uh, the cloud formations that we've got. And we're going to get a really, really intense burst of light on the castle itself. It should look absolutely fantastic. I've shot it a few times before, but I thought I'd bring you guys down so you could see it for yourself. If you're interested in shooting Corfe Castle, I've actually written a blog guide which lists all the uh, little locations and it shows where each of the pictures were taken. Uh, shows all the locations of footpaths, car parking. It's pretty much the most detailed blog I've ever put out for uh, any location and pretty much one of the most detailed ones on Dorset. So I'll put a link in the description. Do check it out if you're ever fancying a trip to Corfe Castle because it will literally tell you everything. Focal lengths, uh, best spots, uh, best times, best time of year, you name it, it's all in there. We're just waiting for the light to work its way across the flanks now, and it's painful to have to wait for this. I'm absolutely desperate to get a shot. I really can't wait, but the uh, sky is a little bit too cloudy at the moment. Um, you do have to pick your conditions wisely with this one, and today the forecast is uh, it's lots of winds. So the clouds are going to be moving along, so it should give us a good chance. All we're waiting for is just one small gap in that cloud. It lets the light through, and it falls on our subject. Obviously, the key here is to have the light either behind you or to the side, but it's got to be able to fall on the subject that you're shooting or else it's just not going to work. If it's behind it, game over. You can't get this shot. You're just going to get a uh, backlit uh, subject, which if you're after, great, but that's not what we're after today. Uh, the key here is light. It's my favorite thing to shoot. Um, I mean, photography, it's the study of light and capturing light. That's the very essence of it. But I think as photographers, a lot of people, when they start up, they get caught up, captivated with sunsets and sunrises. They're beautiful. It's understandable. That's why people do it but do give light a chance because once you start to shoot with it, you'll never turn back. There will be a point in your photography career when it suddenly clicks with you that light makes a difference and light changes everything. And once you hit that point, you're really, really gonna progress at rapid rates. It makes things easy to expose. It looks beautiful. Obviously the classic times, golden hour, nice side lit subject full of golden light. It looks amazing and that's the best time. We're actually doing something slightly different today because the light's due to uh, disappear long before sunset. So we're actually out here and it's, uh, well, it's middle of the day almost. It's two o'clock, um, not my usual choice for shooting time, but uh, today because of the conditions we've got, it actually is gonna work and uh, hopefully we'll end up with a decent shot from it. 
The cloud's not actually as thick as I'd like today. Um, when I came out, it was a lot sort of thicker and a lot darker and more heavy. It looked far more brooding and interesting. And that's what I really, really want on the background of this. Um, any sort of blue sky, it doesn't really help us. And unfortunately, that's exactly what we've got there at the moment. But we've still got some decent cloud with it, so we should be able to get something. Uh, there's a gap just coming up now and the sun's just about to come out. So I'm gonna probably take a shot, see if we can nail it on the castle. We're shooting on a 100 to 400 mil uh, lens today, so uh, we're going quite long on the focal length, but uh, it's essential to really get that castle crop just nicely. Uh, this sort of shot just doesn't really work with a wide angle lens from where I'm shooting it from. And if you get closer, you lose the effect of the castle. This really does give the best position. It's the optimum angle for this particular shot. The area I'm shooting from is known as Corf Common. It's very, very easy to access. There's a roadside parking spot. You just literally pull up there, walk into the common, and you hear it couldn't be simpler. I mean, that's the type of photography that everyone can do. It's fantastic. As the sun moves further round, our angle is gonna change. So we're gonna actually move location. We're gonna to go to one of the better known areas, West Hill, which is where the majority of the shots you'll have probably seen of Corf Castle come from. It's a particularly nice hill, bit of a brutal walk up there with all your gear, but uh, not too bad. But the light will be coming in from the side there and we'll get that direct light on the castle itself. It should look fantastic. Well, we've had a change of position. We've moved round to uh, West Hill now, and we're looking directly at the castle, and the light is coming in just from the side of us. So uh, it should hopefully give us one or two uh, chances to get a decent picture. Um, where we were, just over on uh, the uh, common, unfortunately, as the light moves round, it just means that we're not gonna get the shots we're after. So uh, a quick move was uh, order of the day, but hopefully, with any luck, we'll get some nice light. It's gonna be pushing directly onto the castle, and uh, we should get a decent image. This is probably the best angle to take it from uh, from West Hill. It's the one that's certainly the best known anyway. We've changed tactic now. We're on the 24105 lens and uh, currently at 24 mil and uh, changed down on the aperture as well. Going to be shooting at f8. I uh, want to be nice and sharp on the castle itself. There's nothing that I'm really interested in in terms of foreground but uh, we might switch it up and go to f11 a little bit later on uh, just depending on you know what's uh, what's got the light on it but uh, this particular scene you're going to get a nice band of light right the way across the castle and then a big band of shadow at the bottom and I'm going to include the shadow in the picture just to show that real contrasty look so with any luck uh, we'll get a little bit of light oh in fact here it comes now some light coming up on the castle so uh, I'm going to take a picture. Gorgeous flanks of light just rolling across it, exactly what we're after, fantastic. As I said previously, the key to this shot is just patience. The light's covered, uh, it's obscured by cloud right now, so it's not on the castle. So there's no point in taking shots. You can reel them off as much as you like, but there's not gonna be anything there worth it. Um, the key is just waiting for that moment that the light comes and rolls across the flank of the castle. Once you get that, that's the ticket. That's when you take your shot and hopefully you're gonna get something full of drama, rolling light, it should look spectacular. But you can see the difference right now. I mean, the saturation is beautiful, it's so natural. It looks fantastic with this shadow. Ah, oh, this is just exactly what we've been going for. Right now, we've got a huge cloud system just behind us, but any minute that's gonna clear, the sun's gonna come through and it's gonna light up the flanks of that castle. It's gonna look fantastic. We're all geared up, ready to go. We just need the light. For me, the biggest thing about this shot is just watching the light roll across the flank. And as it does, you can take numerous pictures and you can you know, have half the castle in light, half the castle in shadow. It's completely down to your own creativity. And that's the joy of these shots. No one shot is gonna look the same. You know, everyone shot Corf Castle, but you haven't necessarily all caught it in a specific type of light that each shot brings. So that's the joy of it. Uh, I mean, it'd be lovely if we had more cloud behind it and a lot thicker. It really, really would make the shot. But uh, as it is, We've got what we've got. We're going to make uh, the best of it. And uh, I'm fairly confident we're going to get a reasonable shot. We've just got into gold now, and now we've got those beautiful tones on the light itself. It's much softer, uh, not quite as hard as when we were shooting earlier on. The light then can be a little bit harsh. Uh, obviously, midday shooting, it's not ideal, but um, it does bring you some quite dramatic light if you're prepared to wait it out in good cloudy conditions. But right now, look at this soft golden light. Pff, amazing.
slightly underexposing again, just to make sure that we don't clip any of our highlights. Uh, obviously we're taking a meter reading before the light's here, uh, so we've got to allow for that. So I've gone one stop under, and uh, when the light comes out, it should make the exposure absolutely bang on the nose. So hopefully we're gonna end up with a nicely exposed image straight after. We've been really lucky. We've got some gorgeous golden evening light and it's just fallen on the village and the castle itself. So we've tried to get both in frame. It really does look nice. I'm so pleased you can join me to see some of these sites like this. We've just shot an eight shot panorama just to really give us full detail on this. Uh, settings on this are ISO 50, F8, and it's uh, shooting at a quarter of a second uh, on each shot. It's a creative choice. Some people would uh, make sure they don't have this big shadow in there. Personally, I really like the shadow because I think it just really shows the situation and it adds to the emphasis of what's going on. Shows you the, the castle itself all lit up and with this big, dark, brooding shadow underneath it. Just gives it a lot more drama, I think. Well, as you can see, the lights almost reached the top of the castle now, which is pretty much the end of our shoot. I hope you've enjoyed today. It's been a little bit of a different take on an old classic. Um, obviously with Mist, it is fantastic. We all love it. And I'm sure I shall be back shooting it again like that very soon. I'll stick a couple of images up now. I'd love to know what you think. Also, let me know in the comments, do you guys shoot light or are you all about the sunset and sunrise? What do you prefer? Thank you so much for joining me. If you're not a subscriber already, please do consider subscribing. See you next time.